big congratulations to Andre Rublev who defeated Felix in Madrid. But there's no time to celebrate because we're moving to another Masters event, this time in Italy, in Rome. And this is my draw preview. Go. We've got Jose Morgado putting out a tweet saying the ATP draw in Rome is looking very balanced. And the big news is who's Rafael Nadal going to be playing? And it's pretty good news, I guess, for the first match because he's going to be starting with a qualifier. Um, he didn't do too bad in the last event playing 1000 in the world, uh, Blanc. And now he's going to get a qualifier for the first round of Rome. But let's remember the qualifiers are quite good players so it's maybe not even the best thing in the world probably better to play someone who's not a qualifier who's not in form but that's my thoughts if he does win that one he will have who be her catch uh, let's get into the draw proper and we're going to start i'm going to zoom in a tad so you can see it uh, with quarter one and that is novak djokovic's quarter and Let's have a little look how it looks for Novak Djokovic. The number one seed is back on our screens. He's yet to win a title this year, but he'll be pretty pleased in the fact that he might be uh, slowly warmed back into this event. There's no Yannick Sinner to worry about. There's no Carlos Alcaraz. He's going to have a semi-retired Rafael Nadal potentially in a final. That's the big news. Of course, they're on the other side of the draw. So... Um, well, I say of course. We didn't know where they were going to be. I, I'm so naturally always saying, oh, with Djokovic, Nadal, it's usually a final. In this situation, they could have simply played each other any time. But we're fortunate that they are on the other half. Um, but I think it's a big ask for Nadal to get there. But let's focus on this quarter. Initially, I'm drawn to Francisco Sarundolo. That is a really tough match. I saw him on the practice courts today with Rafa on the Dow. I think he could do quite well at Rome. And that is a player Djokovic will not want to play. And initially, I'm looking at this thinking it's actually not that easy for him. Certainly a tough one. You've got Ben Shelton, Hachanov. I don't see either of them really troubling Um Djokovic at all. Cal Monfils certainly won't be troubling him. Um, and going down, we've got Kasper Ruud at the bottom. Pretty tough. Not not the easiest uh, seeded player you'd want to play if you know that Djokovic. Of course, that would be a quarter final. Um, but I think he will have enough for Ruud. You never know, though, of course. Ruud definitely turned a corner, beating some big players recently. And of course, he is the guy who beat Novak Djokovic at Monte Carlo. Only a, a month ago. So, um, certainly someone he's not going to want to play out of a seeded one. If I had to give uh, a one to one to look out for, one of my outside picks, it is Francisco Sarundolo as a real wild card who could do well. Uh, Djokovic, of course, the favourite. I think the, the rude match is tough. But Sarundolo is my pick for the quarter as the real watch out. I'm going to be doing one of them for every quarter because I think it's quite fun. So the second quarter, this is on Djokovic's side. Um, it's the Alex Zverev quarter. Let's have a look who he's got. Um, I think you have to start one place, and that's Mariano Navone, someone who is flying right now, absolutely flying. He's going to be the first ever um, seeded player for a Grand Slam who's never played in a Grand Slam before. He's going to be instantly into his first ever Grand Slam as a seed, and... The way he's playing and the confidence he has on the clay courts, I think um, Zverev is going to be extremely worried. Of course, he's just played a challenger against Massetti in the final in which he obliterated him. Let's be honest, 7-5, 6-1. It was so straightforward. And I think he's got a really good shot of going far. He's actually a 28th seed for this event, which is insane. Um but I like his chances for sure. Although um, it's never going to be easy to follow up what he's been playing in challenges in a Masters event. This is a real test of how good he really is, in my opinion. And um, it's not going to be easy. Gets a bye in the first round. So uh gives him that extra little bit of rest as well, which is I think is important. Keep going down. None of these names really inspire me. Nuno Borges, I do like. I think he's dangerous at times. Fritz has just got to, was it a semi-final? 
Um, but I don't think he'll be as good in Rome as what he was in Madrid. I don't like the look of Mr. Cordo and Massetti. I don't really, these don't fill me with confidence. Grigor Dimitrov has a good chance. Um, but really, this is a, an amazing section for Navona. Uh, Zverev as well. I mean, if he plays at 80%, he should be able to beat a lot of these names. And Dimitrov being the real one who you need to you need to try and overcome. Uh, so taking that into consideration, you've got Zverev, Dimitrov, and Navone, my wild player, as you know, it's going to be the one to watch. It's got to be Mariano and Navone. And I actually think he's going to beat Zverev. That is my big prediction from the second quarter. Um, but potentially could see a Dimitrov go all the way and get through. Moving to this, the bottom half. So this is who will potentially be playing a Djokovic in a final, the third and fourth quarter. And important to note that if Navone is to do something special, he may even, he may be rewarded with a matchup with Djokovic in a semi-final. But to the third quarter, this is Stefano Sissipas. I believe it won't be his quarter though. Who is it at the bottom? Andre Rublev, the Madrid champion. And let's start from the bottom with Andre Rublev. Is he going to be pleased with this draw? Uh, we've got Matteo Berrettini returning to the tour, uh, playing on the clay courts. Could do something. I think this is not too bad. You've got, of course, Nicholas Jarry. I'm a big fan of his. Arthur Fees, Dimonor is in this section. Stan Wawrenka, Felix, who's just been into a final. Um, Struff and Sissipas. I'll tell you who's going to be really worried here. And that's uh, Stefano Sissipas. Potentially his first match could be Jan Leonard Straff. Horrible. Horrible. Just broken up with Paolo Badoza and he's going to have to play Jan Leonard Straff potentially on a clay court. Horrible. I wouldn't like that at all. Um, but going down, I think the person who can be really pleased here may surprise you what I'm going to say. I think it's going to be Alex Dimonor. Um Rublev, I feel... He's going to have an off tournament. I don't think he's going to produce the same level he did in Madrid. He fought so hard to get to the position of him winning that event. He was suffering with a, a bit of sickness and, and illness. So I think it's going to take his body now some time to recover. And I can't, I'm not expecting him to be a real contender to win this title. That's my honest opinion. I would expect someone like a Dimonor to do better than him. Um, but really, if I'm going here, this is a very open one. And I'm not sure who's going to do it. So, as a wild pick, Dimonor's the main one. And my dark horse wild pick will have to be Jan Delidstroff. Why not? Uh, certainly having a great few weeks winning his first title as well. The fourth quarter. And we'll start at the top which is a bit harsh because it is Daniel Medvedev's section. But we'll start at the top. Let me make sure you can see this because I know I'm covering a bit of the screen, but I think you can. And on the fourth quarter, we have Hubi Hercatch with a bye. Nadal playing a qualifier. And um, I don't think it really matters. I don't think it matters at all. I think it's great that he's got a qualifier. I mean, it's better than, say, having someone really good in the first round. Not that the qualifier is not really good, but, I mean, sort of top 10. So I'm glad he's avoided that. But then after that, Hubi Hercatch, that's that's a horrible one. Uh, on a clay court, he's got definitely a good shot. Seboff Wild, I wouldn't want to play him. Um, and just keep going down. We've got Luka Nardi here, Lajevic, Holger Runa, Tommy Paul, Aslan <laughs> Karatsev. Dominic Kwetfer, no, I'm not worried about him. Um, TFO's having a bit of a bad few weeks. Uh, probably mumps as well. Jack Draper and Daniel Medvedev. All in all, a Rafa who's playing very well wouldn't be worried, but I don't think he's amazing yet or nowhere near his level of amazing. So this is going to be tough. And you're looking at sort of the likes of Holger Runa and Tommy Paul, who I would expect to have really good tournaments. I'm not sure about Daniel Medvedev, although he is the reigning champion. Um, if he is fighting fit, I know he's had a few issues with his adductors and, and other problems. So if he's at a good level, he would usually eat this drawer up. 
even though it's on clay, I think he's got enough to beat a lot of these ones. Runa's not confident. Tommy Paul is good, but clay's not his best surface. An inspired Rafael Nadal can win this quarter. Call me crazy. And for that reason, I'm going to have him as my wild pick. I think it's fair to have him as a wild pick, not the main pick. I'm going to go with Rafael Nadal to surprise some people in this section. Um, but the safe bet is going to be Holger Runa for me. I think we're going to see him have a good event. I think Medvedev's going to be complaining. I think he's going to be struggling maybe with a few injuries. And as, although Rune has not been in great form, I'm expecting him to just turn it around a little bit before Roland Garros and do well in one of the clay court events. And this is the one I'm tipping him to do well at. So Holger Rune is my main pick with my dark horse being Rafael Nadal. Let's move on and have a look at Rafael Nadal's route in full. So it is qualifier, her catch, round three of Echeverry Vild, round four of Runa or Baez, quarterfinal of Medvedev or Paul, semi final of Sissipas or Rublev, final of Djokovic, Zverev, Rude. We all would love to see Nadal Djokovic in the final. Do I think it's going to happen? No, I really don't think it's going to happen. And I am thinking that he's probably going to go out in the fourth round to Holger Runa. The big result coming against her caps, that would be amazing if he can overcome him. Looking at Novak Djokovic, this of course is more of a challenger, I believe, for Rome. He's got to buy in the first round, then Sefudin, then Tabia or Mensik. Then ones will be straight, straight, uh, plain sailing. Round four, I think, is tough. People aren't going to, maybe, people haven't said it on Twitter, I've definitely been reading. I think this is a really hard one, and to Rundolo, I expect to get there. And I think Djokovic is going to have his work cut out. This is, could be a free set one, one that maybe goes to a tie break um, and a really tough match. I think probably in the quarterfinals, if he has Rude again, just lost to him this year in Monte Carlo, that's horrible. If he has Shelton, he'll be comfortably, he'll comfortably dispatch him. Semi-finals will be tough at Zverev or Dimitrov, then a final of Medvedev, Rublev, Sissipas and Nadal. I don't know why he's there. I guess that's for good measure. But Djokovic, I think, if he can get through round four, he's got a good shot. He's got a good shot. Gets through round four, that'll build, give him some confidence. Um, but I'm thinking maybe the banana skin could come in the semi-final. I'm not sure if we're going to see him get to the final. But that's some early predictions from me. Right, there you go. Enough from me. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. That is my draw reaction. Uh, let me know if you agree with some of my comments. If you don't, let me know as well. And me and Ben will be doing some more podcasts and our player picks for um, this event very, very soon. That will be the draw preview coming most likely tomorrow. Thanks for watching. and See you very soon.